So let's go ahead in our next time series video and talk about the question, what are moving average models? Sometimes these models are called MA models. Let's remember back to the AR model first. And if you're looking for what an AR model is, there's a previous video on that, shameless plug. Of course, you'll never have to worry about not getting videos if you just subscribe. But again, let's talk about the AR model. The whole idea of the AR model was to basically forecast a series based solely on past values of that series. We called them lags. Well, we want to keep that same general structure for moving average models, except instead of looking at previous values of y, we're going to switch it up a little bit. We are instead going to look at previous errors, essentially errors from the past. We call these error lags. And really, our model now depends not on previous values of y, but these previous errors that exist across time. That's what we call a moving average model. And in fact, a moving average one model, or an MA1 model, is literally just saying that the actual target variable y depends on a previous error, the error from the time period before, plus some current error. But I thought errors were kind of unseen. How can I figure this out? I, if you're like most people, this idea of errors over time may be a little confusing to start. So let's look at it this way. The solid line is your actual values of y. Imagine you also had a forecasted value of y. That's the dashed line that you see here. What I'm saying with this whole idea of previous values of error is that essentially how wrong you were yesterday, some unknown predicted shock that shifted you off of where you expected to be, is what's actually affecting the current time point here. So the literal error from yesterday, the error from the time period of before, affects the current observation, the current value of y. And of course, these things happen across the entire time period. The errors that always happened before affect the current observations today. Again, these unseen shifts, the things we didn't expect in that current time period, actually permeate into the next time period. Well, most people get hung up on this first observation when it comes to this because I don't have a prediction for this first observation. So how can I use some prediction for this first observation to predict the second observation? Well, one way of looking at this is just taking the average of the whole series. In fact, that's a typical starting point. And in the end, with a long enough series, it really won't matter where your starting point is since moving average models are what we call short memory models. What we're saying is that these errors don't last long into the future. Take a look at the two equations I have. We have the equation for yesterday. Yesterday depended on some error yesterday, t minus 1, but also the error the day before yesterday, t minus 2. We'll take a look at the equation for today. Again, it depends on some error today plus the error yesterday. Well, let's look at tomorrow. Tomorrow will depend on some unknown error that will happen tomorrow plus the error today. But look, there's no more for error from yesterday. It's essentially the errors are gone. It's like they've been forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's basically going back to this idea of stationarity. Stationarity was the idea that the dependence of previous observations declined over time. Not only do they decline in a moving average model, they actually disappear. They're completely gone as long as you go far enough into the future. Now, this is a little bit different than the stationarity we had with AR models, right? With autoregressive models, when we recursively look back in time, the first observation still matters. Even if it's a small amount, it still matters. Moving, observ I'm sorry, moving average models, on the other hand, as long as you go far enough into the future, observations and errors will literally have no effect. All right, let's finish this up. Of course, you shouldn't limit yourself to just one error in the past. You can have as many as you'd like. We call them Q, and you can have an MA of Q, essentially a moving average of order Q. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you could combine both short memory and long-term memory models into one? Oh, wait, we can, and that's the next video. But for now, we're answering what are moving average models. Those are moving average models in under five minutes.